Hey guys, today we're talking about the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit? The bottomless pit of what? The bottomless pit of envy. Did you know that envy is a bottomless pit? You can go deeper and deeper and deeper your whole life and it will you'll never reach the bottom because it just keeps going deeper and deeper. And envy can consume you. Okay, let's look at a quick definition of envy. Merriam-Webster says that envy is a painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. That's a good definition. Let's review some points about envy. Envy is one of the seven deadly sins, and it's deadly because it deadens the heart. It leads to death in many ways of the person who is entertaining the spirit physically and spiritually. Envy is a sin issue of the heart. Envy is an evil spirit. It's not a feeling. It's not a habit. It is a spirit. Envy is definitely a boundary issue, and envy definitely leads to personal harm. Scripture says it rots the bones. So the Ten Commandments also instruct us not to covet or desire what others have or do. This command is to protect us from misery and destruction. Envy inevitably leads to personal harm and debilitation negatively affecting one's spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. There are three examples that I'm putting out today about envy. A Genesis 4, 8, Cain killed Abel out of a spirit of envy. It can lead to murder. Genesis 37, 3 through 4, there was rivalry of Joseph's brothers over Joseph's favor with God, his relationship with God. God favored him, and they couldn't stand it. 1 Samuel 18, Saul had great animosity over David's skills and anointing. Saul was comparing himself with David, and that's what led to this animosity. So let's look at a few scriptures we have James 3.16 here says, Where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing. So every evil thing will congregate around you and be drawn to you and the things you do and the, the people you associate with when you entertain the spirit. Philippians 1.15, some, it is true, are actually preaching Christ out of envy and rivalry toward me for no better reason than a competitive spirit or misguided ambition, but others out of goodwill and a loyal spirit to me. That is spirit of envy. It's everywhere and it's in the church. Mark 7, 21, 22. For from within, that is, out of the heart of men, come base and malevolent thoughts and schemes, acts of sexual immorality, thefts, murders, adulteries, 22, acts of greed and covetousness, wickedness, deceit, unrestrained conduct, envy and jealousy, slander and profanity, arrogance, self-righteousness, and foolishness, which means poor judgment. So that's Mark 7, 21, 22. Proverbs 14, 30, I mentioned a minute ago, a calm and peaceful and tranquil heart is life and health to the body. But passion and envy are like rottenness to the bones. And lastly, 1 Corinthians, well, we actually have two more. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, Love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful, is not jealous or envious. 
Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. And then Job 5, 2, the last one here is, For anger slays the foolish man, and jealousy kills the simple. So I'm just bringing this to your attention because it needs to be dealt with in the hearts of people. Let's go over this. Envy enters the heart when... When does envy enter the heart? When you take your eyes off of the Lord Jesus Christ, high and lift it up. When you lose your focus. When you start looking around, getting distracted. When you start comparing yourself with others. Whenever you compare yourself with someone else, you'll come away from that comparison with pride or shame. See? You lose either way. So you don't want to ever compare yourself with anyone. And then lastly, it causes you to be discontent. And it's hard to shake it off, isn't it? When you focus on someone or something that is not yours, that's when envy enters the heart. When you start to desire that person or thing in your heart, you stop appreciating what you have. You stop being thankful for what you have. You focus outside of your hula hoop. You break outside of it. You trespass outside of your sacred space and go into someone else's sacred space. Envy enters the heart when you focus inside someone else's hula hoop, which is not your business. Envy enters the heart when you trespass with your eyes and then your heart. It also enters when you look to territory that God has not given you and when you desire territory he has not given you. And then let's look at what does envy do? What does it do? What is it doing in your life while you're entertaining it and bowing to it and inviting it into your life and making buddies with it? Well, envy is wasting your time and your attention Envy is preventing you from being content. Envy detours you from God's purposes for you. And envy also leads to many other sins. So real quick, how to escape from envy. We have nine points here. Before I go over that, I want to bring up uh, Proverbs 4.23. This is a scripture that applies in so many areas, and it will apply, apply very much with the spirit of envy because this is exactly what you want to guard your heart against is the spirit of envy. You don't want to invite it in. You want to guard yourself against it. So how to escape from envy? Did you know you can escape from envy? Number one, you identify what you cannot have. What you cannot have. This is the object of your envy or the person, or the thing, or the whatever it is. You're going to identify what is it that I want and I cannot have. And once you identify with that, you're going to grieve over what you cannot have because the Lord has not brought it into your life. It is somewhere else, someone else's hula hoop, or someone else's territory, and you must grieve over what you cannot have God has different plans for different believers, different gifts for different believers, different purposes for different believers. We're all in the straight and narrow, some more than others, but you have to be able to grieve what you cannot have. Number three, you're going to start to count your blessings. Have you ever done that? Make a list of your blessings and count them out loud, thanking the Lord. Number four, be thankful for what you can have. Identify what you cannot have and grieve it. Count your blessings. Be thankful for what you can have. What you can have is what God's given you the green light on. It's what is in your territory. And so that is important. Number five, you pursue what you can have. First, you're thankful for it, and then you go get it. If you want spiritual growth, go get it. Pursue spiritual growth with the Holy Spirit. If you want to be authentic, dethrone yourself as an idol because that's blocking you from authenticity and then pursue authenticity. But you can have whatever 
you your heart desires. The Lord has put desires in your heart for a reason, and He will provide some things in in a, the context of you instead of in the context of the other person. Sometimes, so He will have to show you all that. The sixth thing is that you want to not just be thankful; you want to stay thankful. Stay thankful. Seven. Stay humble. Number eight, appreciate the vessel that God made. The vessel that God made is you. Thank him for the vessel that he made when he made you. You are a vessel. I'm assuming if you're watching this channel, you may not be. But um, then lastly, number nine, you're going to do all this so you can fulfill your purposes in Christ. Not Mr. A or Mrs. B, or so-and-so C, no, those are not your purposes. Your purposes are only yours in Christ. Ask him what his plan is for you, and then listen and follow him and do what he says. If you finally, think about this, if you finally got, those of you who are really struggling with envy, and even those of you who won't admit it, you're denying it in your mind right now, if you finally got what you were envious of, do you know what? We can peek into the future and see what would happen. You would still be envious of something else because the source of the envy is not in your circumstances. It's not in your circumstances. The source of the envy is in your heart. See, wherever you go, there you are. Changing your circumstances, changing where you live, how big your house is, who your wife is, what your gifts are. It's all circumstances. And so if you're envious in the position where God has you now, you will always be envious no matter what he gives you because the envy is in your heart. So what you're going to try to do is ultimately you want to try to be at peace with every man as much as you are able. Romans 12 talks about that. There will be some that will not make peace with you in this envy business. And that's okay. You can have peace with God if someone is envious of you, knowing that you did nothing to contribute to the situation. So it's on them. It's all about their heart, and it's between them and God. It has nothing to do with you. You're staying in your hula hoop. Them staying in their hula hoop is their problem, not yours. Forgive them. Pray for them. And remember, when people envy you and they try to take things out of context that you said or do something to try to tarnish something that you've done. If you've uh, built a company or you've raised a family or you, whatever you're doing, if they try to come in and spin it in a negative way, that is coming from their hearts. And so it's okay. Y'all need to get to the place where it's okay in your heart, in your honest-to-God heart, if people hate you. Did you know it's okay if people hate you? It's okay if people slander you. It's okay. It's okay if people twist your words. It's okay. It's also okay if they twist your actions. If they falsely accuse you, it's perfectly fine. And if they want to kill you, it's perfectly fine. One last question. Who went through all of those exact circumstances? The Lord. See? So you are living the crucified life, and you may have to go through those things. And it's Isaiah 53. It's perfectly fine. Just let the Holy Spirit do His thing, and you just keep listening and following. But you do want to... Move out of the way of the Spirit. You want to stop worshiping the Spirit. When you invite a Spirit in and you keep it in your heart, you're entertaining it, you are worshiping the devil. That's really what you're doing. You are worshiping the devil and you are inviting more evil spirits into your heart. So that is not God's will for you. So I pray that you would oust the Spirit and help let the Holy Spirit help you grow up into Christ to be mature and to learn all of the wonderful blessings that the Lord has purchased for you in the new birth. And that can definitely be a good thing. All right, I'll see you guys soon.